Deutsche Telekom has completed the successful deployment of NIMS, its next generation IMS platform for 18 million fixed line voice customers, designed to deliver a foundation for the telco's digital transformation. Working with its vendor partners, Deutsche Telekom has combined new ways of collaboration with a comprehensive end to end automation and state of the art architecture. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. And to explain more about the NIMS project, I'm joined by Christoph Hills, who is Group Head Voice and Messaging DevOps at Deutsche Telekom. Hello, Christoph. Good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Can I start by asking you to tell us more about the motivation and driver behind NIMS and why you approached it in the way that you did? The driver behind, or the drivers really behind NIMS were really the problems which we were faced in our legacy ecosystem. We were too slow, we were reliant on others, and especially our, of course, our vendors, and we were too inefficient. And uh, let's say if you see how many black box silos we really had in our network and still have, and uh, let's say how we are reliant from the vendors with no synergies between these silos and and uh, the low automation degree this was at the end motivating us really to change the ecosystem because with a vendor lock and let's say long delivery time and a low automation degree we will not be able really to to challenge uh, also our competition and what do you mean by no synergies between the silos yeah, for instance, if you deploy silo one from supplier A and silo B from supplier B and you have different capacity forecasts and the one is really developing and exceeding the expectations and the other one is probably not developing as expected, you have to spend money on, on the one ecosystem while you have really over capacity in the other ecosystem, you can't really put out the hardware or pull out the hardware on the one and really plug it in the other because it's different silos, it's different hardware. So there's no synergies. There are no synergies in between. So how did you start? How did you handle the project? I think one thing is was from day one on very clear, we need a radical change. Um, so we knew the only thing how we can, can really solve all of these, these challenges is change the thing and uh, one big important uh, part of that change was our vision uh, we we called it 3210 vision which is definitely a quite challenging one and uh, i'll explain a little bit of what these figure mean so three is at the end the uh, from the time it, it takes where we have an idea about a new product or a feature. It takes three months uh, to deploy it uh, to the live network. So with R&D in between and testing and validation. Two means from checking in new software till rollout is completed in the live network, including validation, two days. One is for one day for bug fixes, including validation and complete network rollout. And the zero stands for zero night shifts. And having in mind where we come from, that's quite challenging. So radical change was the base for, for, for NIMS. Indeed, but Christoph, having an idea or a plan is one thing, but how do you transform the vision into reality? I think the, the most important thing was really setting up uh, the right team knowing that the team really understands the pain which we have in, in legacy um, and also make the team uh, and convince the team that this is definitely a game changer what we are working on um, and the never gave up mentality. That's at the end one basic uh, ingredient for, for, for this, this topic and for the success story. The second thing is that you need to break down all processes, what, what you had before. Um, and uh, let's say you need to set up a new architecture. You need to start from scratch regarding a technical process architecture. And also, very important, you need to work with hungry suppliers. Now, you said there was a, a never give up attitude, but this is, a, this is a major project. Was there any point where you thought this is impossible and you were perhaps just ready to, to give up on it? 
I think the the people who knows me know that uh, let's say giving up is 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 not it's not possible. So so clear no. Um, of course, there were there are always in projects ups and and down. But uh, I think if you believe in something, there is always a way out uh, in when, when critical situations occur. So where are we at today? What's the latest data you can share with us on NIMS? So at the, at the moment, uh, let's say all our 12 locations, the, the data centers are uh, up and running. Um, we will end up with 80 million uh, migrated subscribers once the, the migration is completed. We will end up in 100 uh, interconnection partners. We're currently in the middle of, the, of uh, our intensive uh, pilot phase and we also migrated uh, first interconnection partners. And I think we already run more than 100 million successful calls during that pre-pilot phase uh, with no fallback so far, which is quite successful. And if you look at the whole project, is there a particular part of the project that you're most proud of? I think the the thing where we are where we are really proud of and and uh, and what makes me really proud is at the end that the people around us uh, there were a lot of people who said you you might fail and um, i think we can convince or i can convince that now that this is definitely not the case and what really gives me uh, fuel on a daily basis is to see the enthusiasm what the team is really having when working on, on NIMS. It's on, on a daily basis, we enhance, we, we make the thing better from, from day to day, and that's really impressive to see. So what gave you the confidence? What inspired you to undertake this work? There are two, two things. Uh, one thing, and that's really an internal topic, let's say inside Deutsche Telekom, I think we have a very cool ecosystem in Deutsche Telekom uh, technology really to, to grow. Uh, my CTO and, and, and also my boss, uh, Abdul Mudezir, they both really drives innovation and they, they provide an ecosystem where people can grow and where we can do things different and they support us there. The second thing is, of course, really having the, the, the team in place where you know these guys really, they, they support you, they support themselves and we, we run as a team. So that's that's one thing which, of course, uh, empowers you to do things where uh, a little bit of braveness at the end is, is necessary. The second thing is I checked the market. So before the NIMS project was started, I visited many tier one operators around the world, in Asia, in the US, but also in Europe, tried to get their insight about the, the status quo where are they in legacy? Which challenges do they see? What's their, their automation degree? Where are they in, in, in DevOps and, and what's their vision? And the result uh, is, is, is very clear or the result was very clear. They all had the same challenges uh, like, like we had. Um, and in DevOps, they're mainly in the beginning of starting that journey. So as a natural result, no one was working so far on such kind of brutal end-to-end -end automation which we have in mind including that uh, 3210 vision and that was for me one really main driver for uh, going for that challenge because i thought that it is not something which will solve my problems i think this is something which definitely will solve also the the problems of many other uh, tier one operators so it's clear you're leading the industry here so how are you now moving ahead? What's in store for the future? Yeah, we will proudly continue. So uh, I think when the voice migration of uh, our IMS fixed network subscribers is completed, uh, or while this is, this is ongoing, we are already uh, working on the next onboarding. So there is a, a third supplier now uh, um, jumping on that platform as really an end of life substitution on one of our legacy systems. So we really use that ecosystem to, to onboard uh, also next applications uh, on top of, of IMS. I have a final question for you, Christoph. What do you see as the biggest challenge that you still need to overcome? I think the biggest challenge is that we are changing everything at the moment. So we introduced DevOps, uh, we are introducing agile working, 
Uh, we have a new cloud infrastructure now. We are really working on the end-to-end -end automation framework, um, which no one built before. So there is no blueprint what you can use where others did it, where you just can copy. So we are developing it on, on a daily basis. There is skill transformation needed because, uh, let's say, all our employees, they need to get used to work with these new uh, technologies. Um, and we also have to uh, take care that there are systems which ha are short before end of life cycle. Um, all important pillars, and they all need to be managed in parallel because there are strong interdependencies between. Um, but I think we will manage that. Certainly looks like it. Christoph, thank you very much for joining us today. And for the complete picture on the NIMS project, please take a look at the other videos in this series. There will be seven interviews in total, plus two panel discussions that delve deeper into the Telco Cloud. And watch out for news on our live Q&A program coming soon. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.